Hello everybody, today I'll be going over version 1.1 of the ASC export script and this one should fix the uh, problem where when uh, people were trying to export out three UV sets it was duplicating the first as the third uh, that's fixed it will also uh, export out high poly models uh, without the recurs recursion error uh, that people have been getting and the performance should be a little bit better uh, I'm currently waiting for uh, 2.8 uh, API to come out the uh, Blender 2.8 uh, API to be updated uh, so that I can do a couple more uh, modifications and uh, performance fixes uh, when they uh, finish the API uh, now just as a quick note my dog is sleeping at my feet so if you hear any loud snoring it is not me all right moving on I'm using blender 2.57 B uh, 2.57.1 release 36339 right what I'm going to start with uh, these models right here they have already been uh, assigned seams and I'm going to hide this plane uh, here's the render of these models right over here I have not UV unwrapped them uh, or anything like that I haven't applied any of the materials I'm going to go through just like I did with my first video and uh, do everything step by step so first we'll go over the installation go into file user uh, not save user preferences user preferences install add-on go to uh, your folder where you have this script and click install add-on you're gonna filter this out by import export and you're going to see the script version 1.10 right here make sure that this is checked Right. You're also going to find that I kept them a little bit separate where uh, both the 1.05 and the 1.10 will show up. Uh, this should be located in your uh, Blender Foundation slash 2.57 slash scripts folder. You can just delete it. Uh, I'm using it uh, and keeping it separate. That way, uh, since this was such a large rewrite of the script, uh, if somebody finds that this one doesn't work for them and I need to spend time on like bugs or whatever that might come up, then they can use the version 1.0.5. Uh, so that's why I left it in and left it separate. Both of these files will be available on my website. All right, so moving on. I'm going to go in and UV unwrap these guys. We have one UV texture, going to add another one, and finally a third. I am using three just to demonstrate that uh, these are separate textures and uh, not duplicates of the first one, like the issues that we were having. Move these guys over a little bit, rotate it, scale it. Right there, that's the third one. Take everything, rotate it, scale it. Just so that they're visually different, each one. All right. So that's done. We're going to add in uh, some new materials. This is like the probably 10th time that I tried to do this video and every time I either uh, found a bug or I messed up uh, something and I thought something was wrong when it really wasn't. Like uh, the last the last time I did this for, for instance, I didn't assign uh, the second material so when I exported it out I thought something was wrong and it wasn't exporting the materials correctly and that wasn't the case. Now these still need to be unique images right here. So that one's assigned. Now I'm going to assign this one. Image slots. Right, so that's done. So we have multiple materials and they are assigned. We have a green diffuse and a pinkish purplish diffuse over here. They're visually different. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in some collision meshes. All right, so move this over. I'm going to scale this guy, scale it along the Z axis, move it down, hit Z to go into wireframe. Looks good, looks good. Duplicate it, move over. And there. Now I'm going to name each one of these UCX whatever I want. I'll name this one UCX C1 and UCX C2. All right, very good. Moving on. Going into the objects panel, now we get to do the fun stuff. I'm going to hide these real quick. We're going to do the smoothing groups, which is what the 1.1 release was all about. Uh, I'm going to scroll down in the objects panel and you're going to see this edge select panel right here. Uh, if you don't see it, click this button and everything will pop out. 
or click this button and everything will pop out. If I want to add things to the future, the reason I made this uh, pop out, then I could have the next uh, option set right down here and you can just click it and collapse one or collapse the other or whatever, but it's all under this panel. So we're going to go over the toggle seams first and what that does, as you can see, turns the seams visible and invisible. Uh, pretty complicated stuff, not really. Edges, same thing, right? but I don't have any sharp edges to, uh, to hide right now. Uh, I'm going to turn off the seams because when working with sharp edges, uh, you don't know visually which one is a sharp edge and which one is a UV seam. So I'm going to turn off my UV seams. I'm going to go into uh, face mode and we will be going over the quick selection menu first, right in here. Uh, the angle is just as it has been, uh, you know, you guys know how it works. All right, so anything that falls within this angle will be uh, have the operation performed on it. Now, one of the other cool things about version 1.1, if uh, let's say I don't have a face selection and I try to do a quick selection, it's going to give me this little uh, spiffy pop-up right here. Error, you must select a face first. Not all of the errors will have this, uh, but as I come across them, I'll add them in. So it's telling me I must select a face first, so let's do that. Quick selection by angle, 60 degrees, done. Right? If I bump this up to 90, quick selection, everything gets selected because everything is within that 90 degree uh, limit there. Right? Now, turning the seams back on, you'll see that this green one on the left has, uh, if I select all of that, well anyway, if I select this guy right here, do it the easy way. If I select this guy right here, you'll see that there's multiple UV islands over here, right? So I'm going to go back out of wireframe. If I do a quick selection by seams, it's going to do exactly that. Grab everything that's within one seam. This guy, on the other hand, is all one UV seam. So if I do a quick selection by seams, it's going to grab the whole island, which is all of the faces. All right, easy enough. Now I'm going to turn on clear existing right here, and I'm going to auto assign. Let's turn off seams. That was another reason why I had to restart a video earlier on. Uh, I'm going to auto assign by angle, and the angle is set to 90 degrees, so anything that is within those uh, angles will get assigned a sharp edge. So let's bump that back down to something that's a little bit more uh, representative. Right there, everything gets assigned uh, if it falls within that 60 degree angle limit. All right, now if I assign by seams, you're gonna see that since this one, this is the one that has the multiple islands, and this is the one that, that is one island, uh, this one separates out all of those islands into its own smoothing group. All right, and that's good, good, let's see what else. So we did by angle, we did by seams. Uh, assign selection we haven't done yet. I'm going to do everything by angle, and if I click this uh, edge loop right here and I assign selection, it's going to assign that entire edge loop one selection. If I don't have clear existing selected, let's uh, assign everything by angle again, then it's not going to remove the current edge uh, sharp edges. So there, nothing happens. All right. So this will help you uh, kind of identify your smoothing groups a little bit easier and hopefully uh, quicker. So assign selection, boom. And uh, yeah, so let's export. I'll keep this one over here by angle and I'll keep this one, let's do it by seams. And hmm, I'm gonna select everything over here. I'm gonna separate this by selection. And I'm gonna do this one by angle. Then I'm gonna bring them back in, join them, and there we go. So I have this one by seams, I have this one by uh, angle. All right. Let's go out of edit mode, unhide everything. Let's hide this uh, plane again. I'm gonna select these guys, select the collision modifiers. I'm gonna save this as test object two file, export, and you'll notice that this is also separate. It says 1.10 now. 
we have the scale, which you guys are familiar with, and auto tries. Everything that is exported through this needs to be in triangles. The script is looking for three vertices per face, not four, so it can't be quads. You can either do your triangles yourself, or you can have Blender do it for you, which isn't always the best idea, but this option is made available to you. So we are going to export this to my desktop under testobject2.asc, export out and let's go into UDK. Uh, this is from my previous uh, failure of a video and I'm just gonna re-import this static mesh. Actually, I'll delete it first. And then I'll import, you know, everybody sees the whole process, test object two. Click OK. And here we go. So we have this one on the right that has all of the ugly smoothing groups by UV seams, and this one on the left that is uh, that has its uh, smoothing groups determined out by uh, the edge angle. So let's go over the UVs. This is UV2. I'm going to go down to one. So this is the first UV set. This is the second, and this is the third. All right. So all three of them are working correctly. Let's go over and turn off UVs and turn on collision. There's our collision models. Awesome. All right. And multiple materials right down here. All right. So we have multiple materials. We have the collision models and we have uh, smoothing groups that are defined by me. And that pretty much concludes everything that we can do now. Uh, like I said earlier, I am waiting for uh, the 2.8 API to come out and I will be able to do uh, more performance enhancements to the script, which will probably equate to about uh, 50 to 100%. Let's get rid of my Norton thing out there. And uh, everything should be getting better now. If you have any uh, bugs or anything like that, please post them on the forums, either uh, the forums on my site at campanini.net or the UDK forum. All right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm going to go grab a beer.